Hey everyone, Mike here with RC Four Wheel Drive. Follow me along in this two part video series and watch how I painted and assembled this 110 scale hard body set to resemble this cool picture I found on the internet. I'll show you a few tips and all the tools and paint I used to get the job done. This body set is licensed by Land Rover and comes with a full interior, opening doors, hood, and tailgate. It can be built as an SUV or a truck like our ready to run versions. It's made to fit directly on our Jolande 2 chassis and even comes with the mounting hardware. Alright, let's open the box and get started. The first thing I like to do when building any kit is take a look at the assembly instructions. There may be some parts that need attention before painting. And have all your tools and supplies ready in advance like a hobby knife, curved scissors, pole reamer, hex wrenches, Phillips screwdriver, wet and dry sandpaper, masking tape, clear adhesive, hobby paint for the lenses, and some hardware store spray paint that bonds to plastic and matches our paint scheme. Next I like to organize all the parts into a category of the color they're going to be painted. For this build, I'm going to paint the interior brown, so I'm going to locate all the parts to be painted brown and put everything else back in the box. I like to start off painting the interior first, and I do this for a couple of reasons. One, it'll give us some practice so we'll be ready to paint the more visible areas like the exterior, and if you make a mistake, it'll be less visible. Use diagonal cutters or curved scissors and cut away all the interior parts from the tree. Next, we're going to deburr and sand all the parts with wet dry sandpaper. I'm using 800 grit to sand all the flat surfaces and 120 grit to move all the sharp edges in the burrs. You want to sand the parts well enough so the paint will stick, but not too much you remove any detail from the plastic parts. Alright, now that all the interior parts are prepped, we're going to go rinse them off in the sink and let them dry for a couple hours before we paint them. Place all your parts on a piece of cardboard and spread them out evenly so all the parts get a good paint coverage. Here's a couple of painting tips. Cut a corner out of the cardboard box and stick your small pieces on it so they don't blow away when you're painting them. And snap some of the pieces together so the paint doesn't contaminate the holes. Use masking tape in the areas you don't want to be painted. Shake the can well and use light even strokes and rotate the parts if necessary to get an even coverage. After about 20 minutes, we rotated all the parts and gave everything a second coat. Two coats of paint should be adequate. Any more and you'll compromise the details of the injected molded plastic. I laid out some paper to set the parts on so they can fully cure while we move on to the next steps. Next up we're going to pick out all the pieces to be painted black. Now these pieces are already molded in black plastic but they're kind of glossy so we're going to go ahead and give them a coat of flat black. These window trims are delicate so use caution when cutting them out of the tree. I do want to mention that all the individual parts trees for our kids are available on our website. Use extreme caution when deburring the parts. Make sure you're actually cutting the burr off and not one of the tabs used for snapping parts together. I didn't want to risk damaging these window trims with the scissors so I deburred them with the 120 grit sandpaper. I also didn't think it would be necessary to wet sand these small trims so I just dry sanded them. And just like the interior pieces, I laid them out evenly on the cardboard and gave them a nice, light, even coat. And in about 20 minutes, I rotated them on the cardboard for the second coat. These came out pretty good with the flat black on them. 
we're going to go ahead and store them with the rest of the parts and wait for them to fully cure and move on to the next painting step. For the tail lights and blinkers, I picked up some clear red and some clear orange. There isn't any prep work to do, I just applied the paint directly to the lenses with a soft paint brush. I probably should have removed the windows from the tree in case I splashed, but luckily I didn't. I used the pictures from the internet to reference what lenses to paint red or orange. These turned out great. I'm going to store these with the rest of the parts while they fully cure and move on to the next step. Now that we've had lots of practice painting the small pieces, I feel pretty confident about painting the main body. Just follow the same steps. Use the heavy paper to remove the sharp edges and the burrs, and thoroughly wet sanding all the flat surfaces using 800 grit sandpaper. Pay attention to the grooves, and be careful not to sand off some of the small details. With all the parts that we wet sanded, we noticed our water was getting a little dirty. This would normally be dust that would be flying around in the air. It's pretty cool how the water catches the dust and keeps the sandpaper clean. I freshened up the water and refolded the sandpaper and got busy on the rest of the parts. On this particular kit, the tailgate, doors, and hood all open and close. I recommend doing a test fit and making any necessary adjustments before painting. I noticed the tailgate was a little snug, so I sanded the edges until it had a nice fit. The doors and the hood seemed to fit pretty well, so I gathered up the parts and headed off to the sink to wash them thoroughly with some soapy water. We're going to set these parts out to dry, and while we're waiting, we're going to do a little science project. Since we're doing a two-tone paint job, I wanted to show you what could happen when applying one kind of paint over another. These really bad wrinkles can occur. I've even seen this happen when using two colors of the same paint. It has something to do with the base color and dry time. Either way, I'm using two different brands of paint here and I'm not taking any chances. So with that said, I'm going to mask off the fenders and paint them first. We'll mask them off later and then paint the main body. I figured this would be easier than trying to mask off the whole body just to paint the fenders. I used some narrow masking tape to go around the line of the fenders because it's easier to bend. Make sure the tape is pressed down firmly. I started with the underside of the fenders first. Carefully aim the flat black paint and dust the inside of the fenders. Then give the outside of the fenders a nice light even coat. After about 20 minutes I gave the fenders a second coat. Try not to saturate the tape too much with the paint. This will help prevent bleed throughs and it'll make the tape easier to peel off later. I think these are going to look pretty good. It was going to be at least an hour before I could peel the tape on the fenders. So I thought this would be a good time to paint the back side of the hood and the inside of the doors and cab. Painting the inside of the parts first actually gave me a good feel of how the blue paint was going to react. And it gave me a real boost in confidence now that I'm ready to paint the exterior parts. With the hood, the doors, and the roof being the most visible, I made sure they were as clean as possible before I painted. And I applied the paint in nice even strokes and worked quickly as possible to prevent orange peel. After about 30 minutes I inspected the first coat and I was really pleased with the results. I did notice a couple of small bumps on the hood so I buffed them out with a paper towel. Make sure these parts are as dust free as possible, then apply the final coat in nice heavy strokes. All the hard work is starting to pay off, cause these turned out pretty good. I'm going to set these aside with the rest of the parts while they cure and get back to the main body. The paint has been drying for about an hour now, it's a good time to remove the tape and mask the fenders. 
Keep in mind the paint on the fenders is still fairly fresh, so apply the tape carefully but firmly. I use my fingernail to push the tape down in the crease. I taped off the outside and the inside of the fenders for that extra detail. Now that everything is clean and the fenders are masked, I'm going to give the inside of the body a nice coat of paint. Rotate it around and make sure you get it from all angles. No need to let the underside dry, we're going to flip it over and give the outside a good first coat. I started with the inside of the bed and then moved my way to the back and around the sides. Rotate the body around and make sure you get coverage from every angle. After about 20 minutes I applied the second coat using heavy, even strokes. I held the body in my hand to make sure I was getting it from all angles. After letting the body dry for about an hour, it's time to peel off the tape. Remove the tape nice and slow, peeling it away from the blue paint. And just like that we're done. I think it came out pretty good. We painted the interior, the trims, the lenses, and all the exterior parts. Now we're going to clean up all the mess, get organized, and put this thing together. Stay tuned for part two. Have fun everyone, and drive it like you built it.